welcome to tonight's session of DJ Talks. I'm so excited to be with you tonight and thank you all for letting us have last week off. Uh, Lacey and I and Jake, we were in uh, Florida and we were there with some very good friends of mine. Uh, it's kind of a dual purpose trip. Lacey and I, we were celebrating our 19th wedding anniversary. Uh, sounds kind of funny, you're celebrating it with, fr with friends and your son, but uh, it was, it was a couple of reasons for our trip. We were checking out some things there in Florida as well and uh, just having some good times with our friends. So that's why we were unable to do uh, healing talks last week. But hey, we're back and so excited to do so. Hey, I want to let you know we're going to take communion uh, tonight. Receive communion here in just a little bit. And so uh, if you need to run to the kitchen and uh, grab you a, a drink, some water, juice, cracker, whatever you need to get. I've got mine right here. Oh, grab, grab it. Here we go. I've got mine. So we'll do that in just a bit. Hey, I want to remind you of some meetings that we have coming up. Um, actually, yeah, we've got some meetings coming up. Um, I've kind of lost track of time. This weekend, we're going to be in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, let me grab, let me grab the information here for you, so I can tell you the right information. Um, come on. Uh, where did it go? I just had it here. We're going to be in Durham, North Carolina, uh, Saturday. Um, we're doing two services on Saturday, I believe. And then, um, got service on Sunday morning. So that's Durham, North Carolina. Oh, here we go. My internet was being a little slow pull this up all right so this saturday and sunday june 18th and 19th we're going to be at kingdom life church international in durham north carolina uh it's going to be held at the sheraton imperial hotel so that's just right down the road from the airport there and then next weekend june 25th and 26th we're going to be at lakeshore vineyard church and it's going to be a busy weekend we're going to be doing service saturday morning at nine o'clock then two o'clock and then 6.30, and then Sunday at 10 a.m. So that's Lakeshore Vineyard Church in Holland, Michigan. Uh, Holland, Michigan. So, um, and then um, July, we've got some meetings. We're going to be up in Oregon, and we're going to be doing some meetings in Tulsa in July as well. And so I uh, will let you know about those that are coming up. Let me tell you, we, we just got back from Sulphur Springs, uh, Texas and that was really really cool um, it's, it's kind of a an outreach type of a ministry there wasn't necessarily a church but I was there held at their uh, convention center there in in Sulphur Springs and we had service that started on Sunday at 4 p.m. and I want to say we finished up around like 8 30 9 o'clock something like that uh, it went it went pretty long, but man, it was just really, really good. And just such a hunger there, and I, I so enjoyed it. I enjoy being at places where there's just such a hunger and such a pool. Um, it really makes it hard to stop because people just keep kind of pulling from you. And it was really cool, too, because um, there at, at these meetings, the I'm not sure if it's like a state prison or, or whatever, but there at that local prison there, they allow... Uh, some of the inmates actually come to the service. And so there was like seven or eight uh, women from the women's uh, unit. And then I think there was about 30, 35 guys uh, from the men's unit. And so they came and uh, they were, I found out they were able to take books back uh, to the prison there. And so uh, we, we sewed into them. We gave each one of them uh, one of our walking in the miraculous devotionals. So that was cool. We were able to sew that into them for free and, and uh, we just had some great meetings, had some wonderful, wonderful testimonies that came out of that. Uh, not only testimonies of healing, but we also had some just really cool testimonies of uh, uh, people just telling me, like, I've never heard that before. That helped me see things from a different way. Uh, just really, really good. Um I want to say uh, hi to uh, the Bartels in Oregon. Looking forward to uh, seeing you guys next month. Um, 
We've got Bob there in Florida. Uh, Sean and Allie in Durham, North Carolina. We'll get to meet you guys this weekend. Uh, Tim, watching from St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, my friend Nisi Flowers. We go way back to Bryan, Texas. Uh, watching tonight. Paul Eller. Uh, hey, man. Good to see you on here. Janice from San Antonio. Uh, hey, Chanel. How are you? Uh, Sherry Farmer, living in the Tulsa area. So, hey, we'll, we'll, uh, we've got some meetings coming up next month. Anna in Boston. Well, Anna, we just pray for you right now. We just speak life to that shoulder and to your stomach, your body. And we just command that to just be free right now. That that the word of God is just so anointed that as we begin to, to get into some teaching tonight, that just as you're sitting here, just because of the grace of God, the goodness of God, things just begin to work in your shoulder. And that just begins to free up for you. Amen. Hey, Rhonda from Lumberton, Texas. Uh, lived in Lumberton for about six or seven years of my young life. Uh, Jonathan from Arkansas. Who else we have? David from Truman, Arkansas. Uh, my friend Clint Murphy in Chicago. Allie in Georgia. Uh, Steve, Sulphur, Louisiana. Hey, man, we enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> good to see all you guys on here. Um, so anyway, we've got those meetings coming up. Also wanted to let you know two other things. So the interview that, and this is a new interview. I know we've done several with, with Sid, but there was one that I went to film for him in um, April. Uh, and so it's for the It's Supernatural show. So that's going to be coming out in just a few weeks. Um, they just uh, uh, let us know today. So um, I think it's going to be the week of July 11th. That second like week in July. That's coming out. Um, but also wanted to let you know about the Healing Academy. So those of you that's gone through it, uh, I mean, you know how it is. We've got the two volumes. And initially when we did this, almost three years ago, the initial design was for church small groups. That's the way we initially designed it, for church small groups to use, either for their, you know Wednesday nights or small groups or to kind of get a healing school going or something like that for their own church. That's the way we designed it. But what happened was so many individuals started grabbing a hold of it and using it. And so we started shipping these things out, uh, out all over the world, really. We've got 16 or 17 nations represented with it. And, um, and so it was going that way. And one of the things I was doing with it was that we were going to add more uh, volumes to it, curriculum, because eventually all of this was going to be an in-person curriculum that we're going to use for a, a training center that we're going to start in the Tampa, Florida area. And then eventually, uh, hopefully here in the next year or two, uh, one that we'll do in London, England as well. But about a couple of months ago, uh, it, I really started kind of thinking about what we were doing and how we were doing it. And to make a long story short, basically starting next month, th the goal is to have it all up and available uh, the middle of July. But we're taking the Healing Academy and we're going fully online with it, where it's going to be a, an online school where you can go on there and uh, there's going to be, I think, I think about six or seven different modules uh, there with various uh, classes that are in it. So kind of like what we've got for the Healing Academy, but expanded. And it'll also have the quizzes and the tests in there and all kind of good stuff. And we're going to create a really great community around that, which we've been endeavoring to do. Uh, we've just been so busy and trying to, to catch up, uh, but we're going to create that around it. And then it'll also be a place where, where, we're all, uh, where we will also have um, other classes uh, that are available that uh, will, will be available and free for all of those who are going through the Healing Academy and stuff. And so, so we're going to kind of switch some things around. So what we have right now, It'll still be there, but it's going to be just for church small groups. And then from an individual basis, we'll have it where you can go uh, online. So we were able to acquire uh, the healingacademy.com uh, a little bit of a price, but um, but it's worth it. But we got that. And so it's going to be, we're going to be running it all through Teachable. Uh, it's an online kind of school uh, called teachable.com. We're going to run it all through there. And so it's going to be really, really nice. I'm really, really excited about it. And it's just going to take the Healing Academy 
up to a, a whole other level and um, and just help to kind of spread what we're doing even more. So really, really excited about that. Um, Lauren Michelle, see you in Holland. All right, looking forward to that. Um, and then the books would be there as well. Um, and in regards to the books, hey, we, we got to see the the uh, cover for our new book that's coming out with Destiny Image. Uh, they sent us the cover and, and we've approved of it and really, really excited about it. And so we're going to be working on getting some things in place and then it's going to be releasing in February. So you got a, a little while to wait, but uh, I'm really, really excited about it. It's going to be really, really good. So anyway, hey, let's get into our uh, message for tonight. I don't want to keep you too, too long, but I want to I want to talk about something that we kind of touched on when, when we were in Texas uh, this past Sunday. So if you have your Bible, I want you to turn over to Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, Romans 15 and verse 13. And Paul says this, he says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Notice what he says, may he fill you with peace and joy in your believing. So what that shows me is that when I'm really in faith about something, I should, I should be at peace about it. I should be at peace about the situation. And I, I should be in joy about the situation. In other words, you could say it like this. The, the two gauges, if, if you want to put it like this, the two gauges for if I'm really in faith about something, if I, if I really truly believe that, that something is mine, that, that God's working this thing out, whatever that is, if I'm truly in faith, I should be. I should have peace, and I, I should be in joy about it. I could let let me put it to you like this: Don't tell me that you're in faith about something, and yet you're crying about the situation. Now, I'm not saying that to be <laughs> to be demeaning, to be critical. We've all been there. Believe me, we've all been there. I've been there, done that. Where you're saying the right things. You're doing the right thing, so to speak. We're kind of following our formula of faith. But in reality, if you're just really, really honest with yourself, you're just not believing. I mean, there's been, situ there's been situations in my life in years past where, you know, I, 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 needed, I needed a move of God in the situation. I needed a miracle to happen. There were some impossibilities in my life that I needed to be changed and become possible very, very quickly. And I was saying all the right things and saying the right, making these positive confessions, scriptural confessions. And people would ask me how I'm doing. And I'd say, I'm blessed, brother. You know, I'm blessed, sister. Blessed and highly favored. And God's good all the time. You know, all these things about this particular situation. But on the inside, I knew I wasn't in faith about it. And I'd be stressed about it. I'd be anxious about it. I, I certainly wasn't at peace about it. I'd be grumpy and, and cranky and in a bad mood. But I'd be telling people I was in faith about it. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because, especially in what we're going after in this area of healing, and, you know, in doing these healing services and the conferences and stuff, and again, I'm not saying this to be demeaning or anything like that. I, I get it. If you've been hurting or... You know, you got situations in your family, whatever. I, I get it. But what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to help all of us to make sure that we're not playing these games, that we're calling it faith, and yet we're not in faith about it. Because, friend, just to be honest, that's where people die. That's where people are in their deathbed making faith confessions and they die. That's where people are doing all the right things and saying all the right things, but not seeing all the results that they should because we're just kind of playing games. We're going through the motions with stuff. There, there's times that I can look back and, and I can be humble and, and I can be honest with myself. And I know, I truly know, I know I was not in faith about that. I was not in faith about that. Actually, I'll be honest with you. So there was a situation, uh, this was in just recently, so I was in I was in Houston, Texas, the last week in February, and there was a man there that was completely blind. 
I mean, completely blind. Like, couldn't see nothing. Complete darkness. Completely blind. Ministered to him. And he started uh, seeing a, a difference right there instantaneously. And then it was like four or five days later, I get an email from him. And he's telling me his vision is drastically improving. And he's looking at the kitchen table. He's seeing the hand, his hand in front of his face. And like... Even though when I ministered to him on that Sunday night, the only change was that he was seeing light now. From complete darkness, he was seeing light. That had nothing to do with, with my stance because I can tell you, when I went to minister to him, when I went to lay hands on him, I was in faith, but I was fully expecting something to happen. I mean, fully. I was so fully expecting something to happen that I... To be honest, I was ticked off at the end of the service when all he was seeing was light and not completely seeing. Like I was mad. And so much so that my friend Adam Clark, Adam may be watching right now, but uh, Adam's been traveling with me uh, in the meetings I've been driving to. And, and, and when we were driving back from Houston to Tulsa on that Monday, I was talking about it, still irritated, and he was trying to encourage me a little bit. Uh, and trying to help me see the situation really for the way it was. But I mean, I was that expecting uh, something to happen. Of course, when the guy emailed me two days later and told me <laughs> that he was seeing, I had to repent a little bit, say, God, I'm sorry, you know. But like I was fully expecting things to happen. Now, uh, compare that, contrast that to the following month. I was in... Um, I was in Indiana at a church and there was a, was it Indiana? Yeah, I was in Indiana and there was a girl there, again, same situation, completely blind. And I'll be honest, I was so tired going into that service and things had been a little rough uh, in those services and and I was, I was a little frustrated with the way things were going. Uh, not the people, the service, but just we were having to push through some things. And so I was a little frustrated. And then physically, I was just really tired. And I just, I wasn't as uh, spiritually sensitive, aware as I should have been. And so I walk up and this girl, I said, you know, she had her hand raised. And I said, well, what can I do for you? And she said, well, I can't see. I'm, I'm completely blind. I had other issues. And I'm going to tell you, right at that point, right then in that situation, I wasn't in faith about it. Uh, I was frustrated already. I was physically tired. And I went and laid hands on her. And I did some things that, that I, I've been doing here uh, typically in regards to our imagination and stuff. And I was trying to kind of get myself a little further than I, than I needed to be. But laid hands on her, nothing happened. I haven't heard back. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if things have progressed or changed. But I mean, I'll be honest. When I laid hands on her, I wasn't in faith about it at all. And I'm just being real transparent with you. I know when I'm in faith about something, and I know when I'm not. And when I'm in faith about something, I'm really, really bold about it. There's some stuff I'll do in services that, <laughs> that afterwards, you kind of get in your normal frame of mind. I'm like, what in the world? Why would you say that? And why would you do that? But the point I'm making to you is that we know when we're in faith about something, and we know when we're not. And if we're not in faith about it, we, we need to not be playing games that a lot of us do. Because if you're, de if, you're, if you're denying where you're at, then you can't fix where you're at. If you're denying where you're at, you can't get to where you need to be. And it's a very humbling thing. And I would rather somebody tell me, and, and I've had this conversation from me coming from this side. But I would rather somebody tell me, hey, you know what? I know what the scripture says, but I'm just struggling in my faith. I, I know what the scripture says, but I'm just struggling making this connection. I would rather somebody tell me that versus telling me all the things that they think I want to know. And one of, one of the ways I can very quickly know if someone is truly in faith about something, is looking at their peace gauge and their joy gauge. Because I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody tell me, I've got this issue going on in my life. 
I know God's a healer. I, I know the scripture says this. And as they're talking about it, they start crying and they start getting all emotional. And, and it just becomes very apparent. You may, you may know this here, but it is not real to you here right now. You're saying the right things, but your emotions are showing me. Your emotions are revealing to me where you're really, really at. Paul's telling you, if you're in faith about something, you're going to have a smile on your face. And you're going to have peace in your mind, peace in your heart. You're going to be at peace about it. Why would you be at peace about something? Because you know that it's already taken care of. You know it's a done deal. Why would you have joy about a situation that looks really, really bad? Because I know it's already mine. I know I've already won. You know, that's why there's this. And again, you may slam me for it. I don't know. There's a real popular song out there. And uh, one, one of the lines goes like this. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the, the battle is the Lord's or something like that. And, and when we sing that, I start kind of questioning, well, when are we going to see the victory? Because my, my Bible says that the victory is already mine, that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. I've already been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places that God, he always leads me in triumph. That means every step that I'm taking, it's always a step in triumph and in victory. In Christ, I'm not waiting for it. I'm not waiting for the victory. I've already got it. He's telling me that in my believing, there's joy and there's peace. And so, you know, even over in, in Proverbs, it says that, that laughter, I mean, it's like a medicine. Like, instead of popping a Xanax all the time, why don't you pop a ha-ha, like, faith it a little bit. Smile, crack the concrete off your face and start laughing at your enemy. The Bible says that God, he laughs at his enemies. A lot of us people that consider ourselves to be people of faith, we're crying because of our enemy and we're worried and stressed because of our enemy. And yet at the same time, we're quoting scripture and saying that I know the scripture says this, but you know, I mean, it's just, it's been so rough. And you don't understand what I've been going through. And I mean, I get it. And I, again, I'm not making fun and criticizing. We've all been there. We've all done that. I've done it. But what I'm saying is we need to recognize where we're at and stop stop messing around and stop playing around. And and if we are in that place and you see your emotions are all out of, out of whack, then that shows you you're going to need to grab a hold of your emotions. You know, Smith Wigglesworth used to make this statement. He said, I don't wake up in the morning and ask, how Smith doing? He said, I wake up in the morning and I tell Smith how he's doing. I tell Smith how he's doing. You need to wake up in the morning and you need to tell yourself that you're full of joy. You may wake up in the morning and your emotions are trying to tell you I'm depressed. But you need to tell yourself, I'm not depressed. I am at rest. I'm full of joy. I'm full of peace. Why? Because Jesus left me. He gave me his peace. The peace of God is one of the fruits of the recreated born again spirit. I have the peace of God. Joy. Actually, let's look at it. Look. Galatians. You need to realize that we already have these things. These things are, are not things that we're trying to get. But Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22, most of you know this. Fruits of the Spirit. says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. You see, we would all pretty much agree we have the love of God that I can, I can love even my enemy. We would all pretty much agree with that. That I can't say that I can't love someone. Why? Because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart 
The love of God has been poured out. I have the, the very nature of God. I can, I can love the, the unlovable. Well, if I have the love of God and the, and the love of God is one of the fruits of my recreated born again spirit. Well, he also says that joy is a fruit of the recreated born again spirit. Me, as a man in Christ, I not only have the love of God, I have the joy of God. I am not lacking in joy. That means if I am depressed, if I'm experiencing depression, it means the reason that's happening, and don't get mad, but the reason that's happening is because I'm not tapping in to who I am in Him. If I'm not experiencing the joy of the Lord in a situation, it's because I chose not to, not to release who I am. And instead, I chose to, to, to tap in or plug in to, to the old man. I chose to tap into those things. I have the joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is what? It's my strength. I have the love of God. I have the joy of God. And notice the very next thing. I have the peace of God. I can be at peace all the time. And that's one thing that uh, I, I have I've endeavored to do over the years. And many of you know, I, I've, told the, I've told off of me. I can't talk about you, but I can talk about me and you're okay with it. But I, I told you the story about what happened to me. I guess it was about five years ago, four or five years ago now where I just got super stressed out for a period of days and about some financial things at the church that we had started and, and we were pastoring at the time. And what happened? I broke out in hives. Lacey had to rush me to the emergency room. My throat swelling up. I can barely breathe. I can't even swallow, barely swallow the spit in my mouth. And, you know, and I've told you the story that she she's dragging me there. It's midnight. And then I'm sitting in the car and I'm mad about what's going on. And I took about 10 minutes, got my mind right, started focusing on him. And, you know, and I got healed right there in the car and she took me back home. But I remember after that happened, after that happened, I was, I was so irritated with myself because I knew it was all my fault. I had allowed my mind just to run wild, my imaginations to run wild in the wrong way. And that was what caused the problem for me. And I made up my mind at that, at that moment after that happened, never again will I worry. Never again am I going to get stressed uh, about any type of situation like this. I'm not going to worry about money anymore. I'm not going to get stressed. I'm not going to get anxious about these things. I'm going to let the peace of God rule in my life. And so I can tell you with all honesty, I mean, I just don't, I don't worry about stuff anymore. Lacey sometimes gets gets a little frustrated with me because she'll be talking to me about a situation. I'm like, hey, it'll work itself out. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, but yeah, but we, we need to talk about it. I was like, well, yeah, we can talk about it. But like, I'm just not worried about it. Not concerned about it. God's working everything out for our good. We're, we're giving it to him, letting it go. You know, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 8, he said, don't worry, don't fret, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7, and the peace of God, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, it will mount guard and garrison around your heart and your mind. And then in verse 8, Paul says, and think on these things, whatever's good, just, lovely, of good report, you know. He said, think on these things. Think on these things. So all throughout Scripture, you see that we've got not only the love of God, we have the peace of God, we have the joy of God, and one of the other fruits of the recreated, born-again spirit is the faith of God. We're not lacking in anything. We have all the resources of heaven to accomplish what he has called us to do. We have the faith of God. You're not lacking in faith. You're not lacking in faith. You have his faith. And you can believe for anything. It's interesting what Jesus said. Jesus said in regards to faith, he said, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. And then he said about us, he said, all things are possible for him who believes. So that puts you and I in the God class. That in the very same way that, that nothing is impossible for God, that for us who believe, everything is possible. There's nothing standing in our way. It's possible. It's always possible. It's always possible. But 
you and I, we can't be playing these games where we're allowing our mind just to run wild on things. We're allowing our mind to run wild on things. And, and we're not focused in on the things of God. We're not focused in and we're not at peace about it. And we're not at joy about it. But we're just mechanically, uh, uh, just rotely, just, just spitting out scriptures and acting like we're there when really we're not there in our heart and in our mind. In our mind. So remember this. He said that the, the peace of God, the peace of God and the joy of God, it's always going to be coupled with faith. You could say that, that joy, peace, and faith they're like triplets. I mean, they're like the best of friends. Where you find one, you're going to find the other two. Don't tell me that you're in faith, but you're depressed. Don't tell me you're in faith about a situation, but you're sad and you're crying and you don't want to get out of bed because you don't know how it's going to happen. And, but I want to tell you, I'm believing, brother. No, you're not believing about it. You need to grab a hold of your emotions. Remember this. God gave us our emotions. And yet... Your emotions can be good, used for good, and your emotions can be used for bad. You, as a spirit being, we are the ones in control of our soul, our mind, and our emotions. And we're in control of our body. And if you are going to lead a successful Christian life, if you're going to fulfill what God has called you to do, if you are going to access the things that God has available for you, if you're going to receive of the things that God has available for you. If you're going to believe for the things that God has for you to believe, you are going to have to harness your emotions, rein them in and control them. You have to be the one that's going to be in control. You have to be the one to tell yourself how you're going to feel. I mean, this will show you how kind of stupidly anal I am about this a little bit. Like, I'm just so, I'm really, really focused in. And I'm not saying that I'm, I've arrived yet, but just so focused in on the fact I'm not going to let my body control me. I'm not, not going to let my emotions control me. So much, so much to the point that, if, that if, if my skin starts to itch, maybe there was a mosquito or something like that, I don't know, start to itch, I'm not going to scratch it instantly. I'm not going to turn around and, because my body told me to. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wait a few seconds. Just from the standpoint of, you know what? You're not telling me what to do. You know, some of us, it wouldn't hurt us to do that when it comes to our food, too. Uh, I do that sometimes as well, uh, especially when it comes to fasting and stuff. Um, you know, if I've just been feeling a little carnal, haven't been feeling too spiritual, um, you know, I'll skip a meal. Just so I can start getting back to the point where, you know what, body, you're not the one in control. You're not telling me what to do. I'm the one that's in control. I'm going to show you what, how, how things are going to be and what we're going to do. I'm the one in control. I'm the one in control. But anyway, I just wanted to share that thought with you tonight just to give you something to, to think about, chew on, something very simple, but that if, if you're believing, if you're standing on the Word of God for some things regarding your finances or a relationship that you're in, some things for your children, or, or maybe it's something you know healthy you know, a health situation with your body. Watch your emotions. Watch where you are with your peace. Watch where you are with your joy. If you start to see those uh, starting to go down a little bit, then that's your blinking red sign. Hey, 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 I, I need to grab a hold of this. And, and, and I, need, I need to rein this in. I need to work on these areas right here because what's happening is, is that we're either increasing in the things of God or we're de decreasing in the things of God. There's, there's no just staying in the middle and staying steady. We're either going forward or we're going backward. Uh, you know, you could, Smith Wigglesworth said it like this. He said, if you're less aware of God right now than what you were five minutes ago, you've backslidden. You see what he was saying? I mean, it's a powerful statement. So many times in church, we think of backsliding as somebody's sin. no, the backsliding started way before you sin. The backsliding started when I be, started becoming less aware of God and more aware of the, the, the circumstances, more aware of the curse. And there, there's all these voices that are always coming at you. 
trying to get you to focus on this and focus on that. And if you'll just watch your peace gauge and your joy gauge, if you'll just watch those two things and keep them high, keep them full, so to speak, then you're going to be heading in the right direction and you're going to do what God has called you to do regardless of what's going on. But you're, if, if you're in fear, if you're anxious, if you're stressed, if you know, you're depressed, if, if you're feeling really cranky, if you're touchy, you know, if you hadn't smiled and laughed in a while, that's a sign. You may not be in faith in this situation like you should be. You may be allowing your emotions to take you down the wrong path and you need to grab a hold of that. So I just want to really, really encourage you. Watch those two things. Watch those gauges like you watch the gauges in your car. If you see your fuel gauge starting to go down, that's your sign. Hey, I need to fill up because what happens if you don't fill up? You're eventually going to what? You're eventually going to come to a stop. And you're not going to be able to go forward and and get to the place you need to go. You're going to have to keep that filled up. So, here's a good question that some of you just asked. Uh, and it would be this. How do I keep that peace gauge and that joy gauge up? It's very very simple. You need to keep your focus on the promises of God, the realities of God. Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, Set your mind on the realities of heaven, for you've died, and your new life is hidden with Christ and God. You need to keep your mind on the Word. You need to spend time, all the time, praying in tongues, praying in the Spirit. You know, if you're at work, I'm not saying make a big show about it. You need to, you're there to do your work, uh, not to have church. But, you know, under your breath, you can be praying in tongues. If you're sitting there and, and doing some type of job, that you can do that. You know, if you get a, a 10 or 15 minute break in the mornings and afternoons, you can do that. You can walk off and go on a walk and spend some time praying in tongues. Or when you go to the restroom, just very quietly, you can do that. When you're at Walmart, when you're at the store, you know, when I do that, I'm walking along and just under my breath praying. When I'm outside cutting the grass on the mower, I'm praying in tongues. I'm always doing those things. Why? to keep my tongue hooked up to my spirit, to keep my mind hooked up to spiritual things. You know, you can listen to, to some good Christian music, not just any Christian music, but I mean, some good worship music, that the words are good, which is kind of hard to find, but find you some good ones. And I mean, just doing all those things to keep your mind and your attention on Him. Because and the, at the very end of it, that's what it really comes down to. What has your attention? What has your affections? Uh, man, that's we, we might spend some time on, on that piece right there about your affections. Because in reality, whatever has your affections is going to influence... I'm going to write this down because I think this is pretty good. But whatever has your affections is going to influence your emotions. That's real good. Some of you write that down and remind me. Whatever has your affections, that's going to influence your emotions. And and, event, and and eventually it's going to influence your outcome. That's good. Uh, I'm going to write that down. So, hey, let's go ahead and take communion. And we've been on here for a while tonight. Didn't mean to stay this long with you, but just some good practical things there for you. Amen. Well, if you got your, uh, your bread and your juice, let's go ahead and take this together. And remember, we're not doing this just to do a churchy thing or anything like that. We do this in remembrance of what Jesus did for us. This is a celebration. And we do this in remembrance of the body and the blood that was given for us. That this is our forgiveness and this is our healing. This represents what we already have and what Jesus already provided for us. And we do this in remembrance of what he provided. So you go ahead and eat. You can drink. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've provided for us. I thank you for giving us your peace. Jesus, thank you for giving us your joy. Thank you for giving us your faith. And because of that, we can believe for anything and that nothing is impossible for us. And while we're believing, I can be full of peace. I can sit here and I can be at rest while I'm believing and standing on the word. And I can have a smile on my face the entire time. And even when the circumstances look really, really bad, I can sit right here. I can rest and relax. And I can say, ha, 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 ha. God, I thank you 
You're working out all things for my good. Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter what I feel. Doesn't matter what I hear. God, I know you're working all things out for my good. I know that you've got this because I've given it over to you. I've cast all my cares upon you. I know what your word says. I know how heaven sees this. And that's the way that I see it. And I'm not being moved from my position of faith because of what's going on all around me. And if I won't be moved, then it will move my situations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, guys, hey, thank you for joining us. I know we kept you a little long, but thanks for sticking around and staying with us. We love you all. Those of you that are partners with us, thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, I truly mean it. Um, when I say thank you, I truly mean it. We could not do what we're doing without you. And just so humbled uh, by so many of you that have come apart and joined the dream team and helping us to uh, go to the different churches and conferences and countries that we go to and, and to send out the books that we send out uh, to the, the prisons and pastors overseas and, and all the other wonderful things we have coming up as well. So thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, we pray for you daily and thank God for you daily. Anyways, hey, we love you all. Remember that in Christ, we always win. And we will talk to you next Tuesday for another session of Healing Talks. Bye-bye.